Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 26th of April. Uh, a major severe weather event potentially across Alabama for the next 36 hours. A lot to talk about, many questions to answer. So let's see if we can knock them out. We'll start with the Skycam shots. At this moment, things are quiet. That's the Birmingham Skycam. It's very warm, very humid. Almost feels like we're sitting on top of a powder keg, which basically we are. Uh, we'll go to the south in Shelby County. That's the Skycam coming from Inverness, overlooking Highway 280 on top of the Wingate Inn. And from Demopolis, a beautiful afternoon. That's looking down the Tom Bigby River. Uh, their dew point's almost at 70 down there with a temperature of 82. All right, the, the lead part of this uh, trough that brought the uh, uh, severe convection to Arkansas last night is lifting up toward the Great Lakes. The next piece of energy is sliding into West Texas. And uh, accordingly, things for the moment are quiet here. Those are temperatures at... Uh, 2 o'clock, we've got uh, mid to upper 70s for Anniston and Gadsden. Elsewhere, mostly low 80s, 81 for Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. Cooler back in northeast Alabama because of clouds. We'll check the current setup. These are instability values. Surface-based cape, convective available potential energy at uh, mid-afternoon. And the numbers are way up there, almost like a summer day, up to uh, 2,500 joules near Montgomery. And if you go to the west, how about a cape of 4,000 to 5,000 joules over Texas and Arkansas? Goodness gracious. That's a powder keg. Uh, there's a look at the uh, helicity, and, and the numbers are not that high, and we don't expect any major tornado issues this afternoon or tonight. That comes tomorrow. Uh, but having said that, the helicity values are high north of here <clears throat> with that lead uh, wave, and then also high back in Texas with the new energy coming in. And there's a look at the significant tornado parameter at 2 o'clock. Uh, the peak value is a 7. That is extremely high. Anything over a 2 is very significant. So we got that thing near 7 around Tyler, Texas. And also we note the STP is near 5, not too far from Nashville. And of course, everybody will have, have to deal with severe weather across the southern states over the next 36 hours. There's the current uh, watch warning situation. What a mess. Uh, first off, a tornado watch way up north. For parts of Indiana and Michigan, that's with the lead wave lifting northeast. We got severe thunderstorm watches for parts of West Virginia, Virginia, New York, and Pennsylvania. Uh, flash flood watches from northeastern Texas up into Indiana. A wind advisory for much of central Alabama. And there's the new tornado watch. This is a PDS watch. PDS means particularly dangerous situation until 10 o'clock tonight for much of Texas. And the Arklatex, report Texarkan up to Hot Springs. And we note that lone supercell beginning to form uh, down there below Dallas-Fort Worth and uh, east of Stephenville, down in uh, Hill County, Texas, near Hillsboro. Uh, again, that's probably going to be the first supercell of the day right there. One of many. How about a high risk for northeast Texas, much of southern Arkansas, northwest Mississippi, west Tennessee, uh, from Mount Pleasant, Texas to Memphis. Those are very rare. You might see a high risk on, what, three or four days a year. Uh, we've got a moderate risk surrounding that from near Dallas-Fort Worth and Waco to near Jackson, Tennessee. And then the big slight risk, the standard risk, runs up into uh, uh, the Great Lakes region. All right, tomorrow, a moderate risk, a very enhanced risk of severe weather from Mississippi and Alabama north to Ohio. The guys at uh, SPC have expanded that uh, enhanced risk farther north. And that, of course, includes most of our coverage area. And on to the north, a slight risk all the way from Mobile, Gulf Shores, Panama City, up to uh, the Canadian border. And there's the probabilities. And again, 45% uh, is the uh, peak number within that moderate risk area, which means a 45% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given point. And on day three, which is Thursday, the risk area is the standard slight risk well to the east near the Atlantic seaboard as we dry out. There's a QPF chart. Don't forget heavy rain could be an issue here. Uh, this is suggesting rain amounts of 5.5 to 6.5 inches from near uh, Paducah, Kentucky, down to uh, around Texarkana. And remember, many of these folks have had almost a foot of rain already. Incredible rainfall amounts. And for North Alabama, the numbers have come up to about two inches. And I think a lot of spots will see over two inches of rain between now and the pre-dawn hours Thursday when the stuff gets out of here. 
Well, check the uh, GFS, the Global Forecast System. And a lot of new people watch this on prior to big events. And uh, we do these twice a day, every day of the whole year. And uh, this is computer modeling, which is what we use in the office. We don't show this on television, but we do show it here. That's why it's called a weather extreme video. Uh, this is valid at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. This level is 500 millibars, where the pressure is uh, that level. And it's about eighteen to 20,000 feet off the ground. Very intense trough digging west of the state. Energy coming through the base of the trough. Highly difluent flow aloft here. Uh, helping the buoyancy of the air. And down below that, a surface low is under 1,000 millibars. This run is deeper, which is problematic, uh, just west of Memphis. Very favorable position for severe weather. And again, what we've got is uh, a situation across Alabama where I think the morning could be pretty quiet, like this morning. We'll have a capping inversion, but then the cap breaks, and we'll have cellular storms that form, and those could go severe with the potential of violent long-track tornadoes. Uh, there's a projected sounding. This is for Tuscaloosa tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, and it's the loaded gun type sounding, a classic severe weather look. And again, you can see the cap there. And also notice that the storm relative winds over there in the left. You talk about veering of the wind with altitude. Goodness. Uh, there's a look at the significant tornado parameter. This is valid at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Numbers are almost off the chart. Uh, running from uh, uh, eastern Mississippi up through northwest Alabama into Tennessee. And the supercell composite, same thing. Numbers are off the chart. And I could show you these all day. You know, we've looked at a lot of things. Clearly, synoptically speaking, everything is in place for a red letter severe weather day. Potential for violent long track tornadoes. But the mesoscale, the small scale stuff, really determines the ultimate outcome. And that we won't know until tomorrow morning. When we just look at things. Where are the boundaries? Where is it cloudy? Where we got the where, where's the cap stronger? So uh, again, we have to be ready for a major event, and just be ready. Get the warnings, know what to do, we'll be okay. All right, Thursday, look at the trough axis being progressive, moving on to the east. Nice, cool, stable air dropping in here. Thursday should be just a gorgeous day. Highs drop into the low 70s, a nice north breeze, and uh, the GFS is showing 71. And Friday morning, we might visit the upper 40s. That's Friday, gorgeous day. We'll start the day around 50. We'll see a high in the upper 70s. And Saturday looks good to start the weekend. Uh, low to mid 80s, a good supply of sunshine. Now, this the next front is slower here on this run. This is the uh, uh, look at Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock off the GFS. And the ridge is stronger, holding the front back. And accordingly, we, we're dry on this run on Sunday. Uh, it's got the main band of storms still north and west of the state with that deep surface low near Hudson Bay. And on Monday, finally, it eases in here. So if this trend keeps up, we can kind of leave Sunday dry. And now mention mainly a chance of showers and storms Sunday night and Monday of next week. And again, the severe weather possibilities look low, which is good with the main dynamics so far north. And in Tuesday, a week from today, we're dry and pleasant. We'll check the end of the forecast on May 12th. Woo, Nelly, look at this thing here. Look at the trough over the east. You talk about anomalous 540 line almost down to, to Scottsboro. And if that's right, that would be very cool for the east. But uh, what you bet that thing goes away on the next run? We'll see. Not much consistency out there. Not looking for specifics. We're just looking for trends. Longtime viewers know that. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes on the blog, running uh, commentary and updates on the uh, severe weather event, uh, alabamawx.com. Uh, we will have the next video here tomorrow morning at 7, weather permitting, and we, I think we can crank one out then. And, of course, if you're local to us in Alabama, we invite you to watch us on television this evening. That's ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, and God bless. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.